Uh, so the question is, what's the point of this London line? D4, D5, bishop f4, e6, e3, bishop d6, bishop takes e6. Aha. So the, the point is, yeah, well, first of all, usually like bishop g3 is probably the more standard move. Uh, but the point comes on the very next move, regardless of what black takes back with. If you watch my games in this line, uh, the move I like to play is queen g4. And it's not a move you can play too often in the London. Like usually black plays knight f6 before bishop d6. But in this specific move order, queen g4 is a little bit annoying for black because g7 is attacked and black has to make some concession to defend the pawn. And some people go really wrong here. They play queen b4, knight d2, queen takes b2, and this is losing for black because rook b1, and whatever the queen does, we take on g7 and win the rook. So it's a nice um, a nice detail in this line that you can play queen g4. And I think maybe g6 is like the better try, but then white can develop in a slightly different way than a standard London. Usually go for the e4 break target the dark square weaknesses so it's a nice uh kind of weapon to have in mind a lot of people who play this as black don't realize they're allowing this queen g4 move hey eric have you checked out dania's job Arv? oh hey ruckles if so what do you i have <laughs> have you incorporated any of his ideas into your play yeah it's uh i mean it's a very extensive repertoire but yeah, I got the course shortly after it was released. And at some point he like updated it with even more analysis and annotations and PGNs. I mean, one of the reasons why I got the course was to not necessarily play Joe Bava London as white, but to see his recommendations and try, try and see where maybe gaps in the repertoire could be and how to best reply to the Joe Bava London. Um, Maybe not the most common reason for getting a course, but I also, I mean, I can also explain one of the reasons why I got the course was I was having trouble in these lines because usually I play a more traditional London, but against G6, I can go into Jobava and there are some lines in the course that were actually like really nice to include in my repertoire. Uh, do I remember what they are though? Like bishop here, here, I think it was castling c5, or no, not c5, um, or not castling, castling? Yes, castling h5, c5. Like I was actually very impressed with his analysis in these lines. I think he recommends queen d2 and then queen side castling, but um, yeah, it definitely helped like fill in some gaps and lines that I wasn't okay, super prepared in. Eric. Thank you, pesky forks. And then, um, I mean, I mentioned this recently when I played Danya, but uh, I guess it was a few weeks ago in Title Tuesday. Danya played the Joe Bava London against me, and the line that we went into, I knew was not covered in his course. Uh, it was a line with this e4 move, and when takes, 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 and the move I played here is maybe not quite a novelty, but it's super rare. Uh, I think most people take on d1, but knight d7 was um, a nice surprise, and I managed to beat Danya in this. Um, I mean, white's still fine here, but uh, yeah, it can be nice to like get a course and then just research lines that are maybe not in the course and then surprise people who have the course. Or in this case, surprise the person who created the course. Sometimes my QGD transposes into the accelerated London. What is that? I'll be honest that I don't always Glad I fully understand the naming schemes of some of the openings. Um, I, I couldn't actually tell you what the difference is between accelerated London and normal London is. Maybe accelerated London is... Uh, I guess bishop f4 is considered accelerated London, and then knight f3 is more traditional London. 
And there's some nuanced, uh, it still says Accelerated London. I don't know. Um, some of the names are kind of arbitrary. If you're starting with QGD, I guess, like, there might be lines where when White plays Bishop F4, it still resembles some London opening, but might depend on the specific line. Best way to get out of a rut. Do I have a rut command? I've been asked that before, and I usually respond with the same answer. I don't. I do have the podcast command, though. I was asked ex exactly this on the podcast. So recently, I was on this, um, it was a chess mood podcast with Avatik Gregorian. So it was a two hour conversation and we touched on a lot of different topics, but everything is time stamped. So we started kind of with how I got into chess, my early motivations. And yeah, at the 19 minute mark, I talked about how I got out of a four year plateau. So you can listen to the interview. Um, in the interview, I do reference an article I wrote. Let's see if I can find it. 2015 Philly Open. Okay, I'm I'm adding a rut command. Commands add rut. I mean, the topic of the article doesn't really mention rut, but it mentions keys to success. Anyway, in this article, I kind of talk about how I was stuck for about four years around the same rating. And the advice that I provide, I think can be applied to a lot of different rating levels. Because a lot of people have goals surrounding like a certain rating or a goal trying to get a, a title. A lot of people trying to break 2000 or get to master, grandmaster. But it's good to form more achievable study goals, like focus on improvement goals. So these were my my goals way back when. And then I had different goals for like study. And then during a tournament, it's important to try and optimize your, your mental form and physical form. Also goals while playing. Sometimes you have to also identify what areas you're struggling with. For a good part of my chess career, I really struggled with time trouble. It took some adjusting to avoid it. At some point I, I expanded my opening repertoire too. So anyway. Oh, I played Christian Carrillo. Forgot about this. We played some crazy... I remember I played F4 at some point. Yeah, I played F4 to prevent E5, and we had a funny position. So many pawns on dark squares. Anyway, I think I'm I'm burning some time just trying to answer questions in chat, trying to provide some some value, some inspiration for people. What was one of the wildest games you've played seriously? I would have to think about that. I mean... The game that I played OTB against Ben Feingold was super wild game. It didn't end happily for me, but it was crazy. So I, I showed that on stream uh, not too long ago. I showed it on stream before my match with Ben. So the VOD should be somewhere on my channel. And the whole match will be on YouTube pretty soon. How deep is your, your Reti repertoire? My repertoire in the Reti is more focused on how to play against it. I think there's a decent chance I'll encounter maybe at least one knight f3. But there's title Tuesdays where we see more d4, e4. We'll probably see a variety though. I did um, go through a very brief phase of playing the Reti in Switzerland uh, during the Beale Chess Festival. And I kind of adopted Hikaru's, I wish I could say I adopted Hikaru, but I adopted his repertoire. And before one of my games in Switzerland, I, I downloaded all of Hikaru's chess.com games. I filtered them with just focusing on one night of three. And I was primarily focused on this line with E3 and then B3. And I mean, Hikaru's prep is like super, super interesting. Any tips on dealing with refutations? If your openings are getting refuted, you should maybe switch up your openings. Play something a bit more, a bit more sound. How can you verify a touch move dispute? These days, if it's like a high level tournament with cameras, maybe you can have um, video evidence. 
There was one tournament I was working. It was a scholastic tournament. I was working as a photographer slash social media person. And in one of the final games, there was like a big time scramble. And at some point, there was a dispute on what square one of the pieces was on. And I happened to be filming the whole time scramble. So like the arbiter came over and they like couldn't resolve it because the players had stopped taking notation and the arbiter wasn't watching. So then the arbiter checked my footage and they were able to see what, uh, what square the piece was actually on. And then the game resumed. Our arbiter is allowed to play amongst themselves while the games are going on. I've, I have not seen an arbiter be playing chess in the midst of a chess tournament. They should be arbiting. Arbiting? Arbitering? There was one tournament I played where the arbiter was on his laptop in the tournament room playing, I think, solitaire, maybe free cell. And it was like a dead silent room, but you could just hear the constant clicking of, of the mouse. And it drove a lot of the players insane. I think at some point someone spoke up. There was one year, I think it was the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. They had the players play with no delay and no increment. I'm pretty sure it was like just 5-0 Blitz. And then to resolve any disputes, they had slow motion replays, which was pretty cool. Like the new age chess. But it got messy. Remember one year, I think it was that same year, like one of the players just started bleeding and the, like at the end of the game, the clock was just like stained with blood. It wasn't that bad, but it was uh, maybe slightly violent. Computers in the playing hall, question mark. Isn't that illegal? Uh, not for the arbiters. Arbiters will usually have a computer to monitor the broadcast. Of course, there won't be an engine, um, but it's usually to make sure the DGT boards are working. And uh, it more easily allows them to verify threefold repetition claims or 50 move rule claims. Okay, I need to get ready for Title Tuesday. If this goes on YouTube, hello to YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, but also on Twitch. And let's get into it. Playing Schwindel, like the username. I don't think we've played before. Okay. I'm playing my pet line against the French. Looking at knight g5. So it prevents queenside castling. And I want to play bishop d3, and then if c4, I can take on h7. I mean, black might sack the pawn. I think I'm happy to take. That's a nice looking position. Bishop b7, I can play. Probably have a few options there. Queen h5 would be nice. I mean, it is maybe a little bit risky doing this. And then a five, I'll take it. And then, then I fork. Now the H file is open for black. Probably want the bishop on F2. Although it does have to defend the knight. Bishop E3. 
maybe some case where I queenside castle like queen e2. Wow, really? Ah. Uh, does that work? Yeah, black is, I guess, winning back a pawn. Take queen e2. I think I can take and then bishop e2, take knight f3. Took me a long time to spot that. There's no like immediate checks with the queen or bishop that are effective. I wonder if black had bishop b4 instead of uh, going into this. I think things are under control now. It looks like I'm winning the piece. I, mean, I could play no g3 doesn't make sense. It's my g6 idea. Okay, so knight g6. Queen g3. I have bishop f1. It's okay. And black might be getting some counterplay, though. Knight of three may have been safer. Should also note, I have. I start with this move. I don't really need to take the rook right away. Rook c1 possibilities. Queen b4, queen d2 probably. That move I missed. Uh, I do have this. This actually looks really nice because bishop d6 I take the knight. King b8 I... Uh, I would take and pin. Well, now I <laughs> do everything. Okay. That was a nice game. I felt like I I spent my time well in the critical moments in this game. Like, here I took some time to find knight g5. Because if I gave black time to, like, castle and expand, then maybe it wouldn't be so simple. And then later, yeah, I mean, I completely missed this idea of taking and then t attacking the knight. I wonder if black should have should have taken on g5 first, like this position. And then that way... After this, this I'm, I have no time to play knight f3 because it's check and I lose back the piece. So I think black just kind of got the move order wrong. Oh yeah, I beat um, this person with sunglasses. What's his name? Mongoose. Can quickly check the engine here. Engine likes black. Oh, engine likes knight takes e5. Knight d4 also playable. Ooh, did they change the interface? They did. Ah, so it's now it's a bit more like chess base and lee chess. I kind of like that update. Yeah, because the notation looks a little bit different too. Yeah, so here I was curious about bishop e4, and it turns out that this 
leads to a completely fine position for black, and then white has to be careful. Because bishop here, I lose a knight. And then bishop here, or uh, king here, I'm subjecting myself to trouble. Okay. So, waiting for some games to finish. A lot of people with one point after the first round. Okay, watching a random game here. Should be a draw. Just as a draw. Bortnik. Mikola Bortnik is going to win this game. Good try. <laughs> okay. Okay, this should be a draw. Okay, we'll watch this game. Next game starting very soon. Oh, it's this weird bug again. The clocks move, but the pieces don't move until the final position. Okay. Thank you, Steph. Next game starting playing Vitor Bronson from Brazil. This is a Barman variation. With e3, yeah, I like to play this move a6. I feel like I had this recently. Let's play a5 first. Because recently I had some line where I got in trouble. Now c6, I have knight b8. And then the pawn's probably a bit too far overextended, although maybe it can be defended. I was giving a lesson last night about like cases where pawns got overextended after my speed run. And I showed like a very similar example to this. So let's take in D five, I have knight of six. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, I don't really want to play f6, but I might have to. I mean, knight f6, bishop c6, bishop d7. Maybe it's okay. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, not the best structure. King will probably stay in the center.
Yeah, rook d1, I can't take with a queen. Oh, that's a move too. Go now. That doesn't look great. Oh no, my pawn. I had bishop f4. It's a safe option. I feel like I missed something there. I just got fort. Ay, ay, ay. Wait, why did I do that? Yeah. Oh, uh, what to do? Did why you really leave the pawn hanging? I could have just taken. No, I had like a second left. I was pretty set on thinking white was going to just wait with a king. Okay, what to do? I mean, I'd imagine this position should like somehow be winning for white. But it's not really completely winning. And then here, of course, yeah, if I take, it's uh, much closer to a draw. Okay. If we go back, I mean, I burned most of the rest of my time here. So I was trying to figure out how to get bishop f4. 
If we go back a move, oh, Bishop F4, it's good, but it's not winning material because there's Rook here. Well, it was a nice position. Like I was really trying to orchestrate something with the back rank because the king doesn't actually have Luft with the bishop here. Of course, I want to play something like this, 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 but it's not mate because knight g1. So that's one reason I played this, was to try and deflect the knight away, so then I can checkmate. Let me turn off emote only. And then I just got forked. I moved the wrong rook to b3. Yeah, rook bb3 is a bit nicer. Thank you, Kempis Ringling. Oh, good job to this person, guessing nine moves right out of 35. Okay. So 50%. I'll try and um, manage my emotions, not get too tilted. That's a nice fork. Yeah, if if this bishop or if this knight were a bishop on a dark square, it would be a draw. But this is a classic win. Okay, next game starting soon. So far, White has won every game of my tournament. I'm trying to keep up the streak. Playing El Sporco. Opponent taking their sweet time. These are generally pleasant positions to play for a blitz game. Play rook b1. There's some ideas b3, a4 to play positionally. That move indicates that um, c4 is coming. King h1 just gets off this diagonal, which in most cases can be useful. Okay, now this, I think, makes sense. I'd like to play b3 next. We might see black sack the pawn. But then I have c4, maybe c3. Well, now, yeah, these pawns are a bit stuck. C4, I just take with a D pawn. And the plan is to play queen f2. Targeting the pawn. Some idea to get the knight to e4. I'm going to put the knight on f3, I think is a bit more useful. 
even queen h3. So my idea now to play f5. Yeah, this diagonal is not a concern because the pawn is stuck on c6. So now both bishops are completely out of it. Knight is coming to d5, but should be okay. And the question still remains how to break through. I don't think I want to take either rook. Black just willingly got forked. I'm thinking maybe the queen can come to e4, rook can come to h3, and then I'll threaten rook takes h5. Just have to watch out for c4, it's like one of the main breaks. Bishop does a nice job of restricting the knight. Ooh. Yeah, this move. The threatening rook takes h5. Now f5. It's almost working. Now let's go for it. Okay. A pretty smooth game. We got a little bit low on time there. But uh, yeah, it was basically full domination. Like, I think once black kind of fixed the queen side structure, it was very difficult to do anything. It was a nice example, like how to kind of play this position patiently as white. Because um, sometimes in these lines, white can go for the quick king side attack, but in this case, it was more positional play on the queen side and then gradual expansion on the king side. Do you have rook g4 a bit later? But which rook and which move number? Maybe here, queen h7. 
at this point, it was just a matter of playing any sensible move, I think. Before queen h4. Ah, like rook g4 and to prepare f5. Yeah, yeah, there were a lot of ideas to um, kind of consider. Engine likes f5 right away. So this was game three. I'm two out of three. One more game until a break. Rook a g4. Still not clear which rook. <laughs> Or rook g g4. But yeah, something like this could be kind of cool to then sack on h5. That does look nice. Maybe black defends somehow. Okay, next game. Okay, hopefully I can break the curse of white winning every game. Another d4 opening. Another barman variation. I think we're following Kasparov Nepo from some years ago at St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. Pretty sure H5. Okay, now I can take I think taking is better. G4 looks more natural, but the idea is to eventually play knight g4. I'm gonna have to play c6 because knight f6 is right away runs into queen a4 check. Yeah, now the knight wants to just establish itself on g4. White doing something similar. I do have queen e7 here. It's also bishop g4. Let's start with queen e7. I mean, the line with castling take and king h1. Looks a little bit murky. King d2, wow. A knight g4 and then f6. Oh, there's bishop g6. Considering this move, it prepares rook f6, but also prepares pawn f6 and prevents bishop g6. Yeah, this the last sequence of moves was all pretty natural for both of us. And now I'm ready to queenside castle. I think this is a solid construction. Okay, not quite ready to queenside castle. That's kind of annoying. If I take... Don't really want to take the pinned piece. 
Does 95 do anything? To take. We might see king takes, okay. No. So going after the pawn. That's a smart move. Anything can still happen. Uh. I'm down four pawns. Now I'm only down three pawns. Now only two pawns. Still some trouble though. <laughs> I saw it coming. I didn't want to say anything to jinx it, but that was the whole goal. Let's go. 
That's two weeks in a row, too. That's why you don't resign. Uh, XI Spark saw it coming as well. <laughs> okay. If any other streamers were watching that, please clip it. Because I think last week Hikaru was watching a similar trap and no one clipped it. Thank you, Wit Cow. The 2750 bits. Have to work back towards that rating. I assume my heart rate elevated that game, but I'm I'm back below 100 now. Thank you, Eldara EP. But yeah, um, it's incredible how many like strong players will stalemate in <laughs> positions like this. And the reasoning behind, like the the reason why this works so often, is because first of all, White's usually like getting impatient, like just waiting for uh for resignation and then when you take on on b3 here you just assume that the king's going to take back so uh white of course pre-moved g8 queen but when i move into the corner it's stalemate so uh yes maiden one was missed maybe rook a7 should have been pre-moved okay we have the clip from hippity Okay, that's nice. Uh, nice game to go into a break with. I mean, my opponent played well to just completely outplay me. And I thought I was solid here after bishop f7, but bishop f5 I think was very strong because then my king can't really get safe, and my knight was stuck. Yeah, we do need like a, a mega stalemate compilation for YouTube. Can imagine a a future YouTube video of like two hours of of Rosen getting stalemated. But yeah, it's okay. I'll I'll be able to uh, get the clip from the VOD <laughs> or download the VOD. So there was a game that Nepo beat Kasparov in like 20 moves, maybe less. Let's see if I can find it. I've taken the game to Lichas. And... Oops. Not sure if the game will come up in the Masters database. Let's see. Kasparov, Nepo, is it this one? Might be this one. No, it's not this one. To be on the other end of the rose and stalemate trap must be infuriating. Yeah, I've I've been there a few times. I I know the pain, but it's uh. It's very pleasurable to be the one who still made it. <laughs> I'm having a hard time finding the game. I have Kasparov's profile on chessgames.com. It should be... Ah, it's this one. So we'll compare the positions. So we both had this position. Kasparov also played bishop g3, and they went into the same line. Oh no, this is my game though. Ah, Kasparov played queen b3. This may have been the event that Kasparov came out of retirement. Uh, it was played in uh, Croatia in 2021. As a, yeah, I think it was a blitz game. But Nepo proceeded to just crush Kasparov. Takes on c3, plays c6. And then here, there is just a winning tactical sequence. Starting with takes, takes h4, bishop d6, and then queen f6. And White's just losing. OK, 
Kaspar resigned after 18 moves. So in my game, it was a bit different because h4 was played. Engine slightly prefers black. Oh, Engine says g4 or knight takes g3. Both are playable. I went for this, played c6. So up until this point, everything was clean. Actually, the first 17 moves, I played like all computer moves. Also, I think a game just started. Okay. So no more time to analyze. Oh, it's my, okay. It's my opponent giving me time odds. <laughs> uh, will opponent get back some time there though? Okay, let's, uh, let's focus. We have a Taimanov, which was requested from XI Sparks at the beginning of the stream. A lot of the moves white can play in this position. This is becoming a more popular line. Take on h2. I mean, it looks kind of risky, but. Are there any consequences? Oh, there might be. I think I've gone terribly wrong here. Oh no. Uh, it's still kind of interesting. There goes my queen. Oh no, my queen. I do have rook, bishop, and pawn for it. Or rook, knight, and pawn. F4, I think I have g5, so my bishop shouldn't get trapped. Or bishop g3. Ninety five doesn't work. Mm. I want to cover my dark squares. Gonna try and play quickly. Bishop C five might be coming. Take an F6. Maybe G5 coming. Like Queen G3, G5. Yeah, I'm getting something playable here. I do have Knight G6. Rook H1 is now a concern. So there's no queen h8. I think I'll be in time to castle. And there's bishop h5, which could lead to some trades. In bishop h5, maybe I play king f7. Oh, there's queen h5. That's not good. Yeah. Mm, so much regret. King there. Uh, 
I'll still fight castle and rook h8. I'll have to pray for another miracle. I mean, it's rook for rook and pawn for queen. At least my things are defended. I have a dark sword bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Wow. Wow. Oh, what a swindle. What a swindle. I can't believe that. I couldn't believe the previous game, but this game. Oh. Let's prove that you don't need a queen to, to survive. I mean, yeah, I just hung that f-pawn here. But to be fair, like, queen c5 is coming, or queen takes b4. So, position's crumbling. I regretted not throwing in the check, forcing king here, and then rook h2. But I kind of misplayed the move order. Because then, if bishop here, I would play this. And I think... I think like this might actually be a draw. I don't know if white has anything better. I mean, maybe I could even play for a win with rook e1. Yeah, I'm like winning back the piece. Less than three. Still slightly better for white. Thank you, Bartosa. So I'm three and a half out of five. 
very fortunate spots. It could have easily been like one and a half out of five. I should have lost the last two games. I really misplayed the opening. I don't think Rook G1 was theory, but maybe it's it's definitely a move. Yeah, I really need to brush up on this line. Yeah, Rook G1's playable. And taking was not a good move. Yeah, just B5 takes. So if I take with Queen Bishop G2, then just move back. Okay. Yeah, G4 is one of these more trendy lines. Okay. We move on. Oh, playing up. Yeah, a strong player. Okay. Some kind of deep line. G6, queen here. Queen F6 and then queen here. I think white's supposed to be slightly better in this line. And there's three moves for black to defend. Whichever move happens, I take and play knight e2. Thank you, heat wave. Yeah, this is the extent of my preparation. I mean, knight. Knight f3. Have to watch out for knight b4. Knight b4, I can play this and then take. So h6, do I... I guess I am threatening knight f7, knight d6 to get the bishop pair. And bishop f3 here. H6 is coming. Considering bishop h3, bishop d2 first. C3. Take knight C6. Maybe like A3. This pawn is backwards. So B4. Hmm. 
So my idea is to play a4. It's here, here, then the c-pawn's backwards. Pawn takes, okay, not happening. Uh, d3 is weak. Should still be playable. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, bishop g4. And I have knight c1. Bishop H6 coming. Ay, ay, ay. Not have any moves. I didn't see what to do there. I Rook was hanging on C8. A vast A pawn now. Oh, wow. wow. These last three games have been the most ridiculous swindles. Like that stalemate trap maybe was uh, the least ridiculous of all the swindles. And I was just getting crushed this game. Wow. I was happy to play this opening prep, like some kind of deep prep. Had some early pressure. Thank you, Shwarma. Yeah, if you just joined, like you, I guess you're fortunate to catch this game, but the previous games were just as uh, insane. Yeah, my opponent played well to neutralize everything. I really didn't have much of an edge. 
And at some point, I kind of self-destructed on the queen side. Engine prefers knight takes. A5 was a good move. And then, yeah, I, I kind of misjudged. I thought I was going to get the knight here, but this pawn was so weak. But somehow I stayed alive, like king f2. But I really should have just been losing like pretty easily. If black wants, you can probably do this or take and then do this. I mean, of course, there's no reason to. And then I hung my rook. <laughs> Opponent just reflexively played king g7. And then this was kind of, that was kind of the turning point. All right, uh, emote only mode. Here we go. Playing another Grandmaster. Interesting move order. I'm a little bit curious about this line because if I play bishop d2, there's takes, takes, takes. I don't think that's good. Hmm. I've not seen this move order before. I could play rook e1. of g5. I'm still like flustered from all the previous games. Um, should play queen f3. Should be a solid move. Took way too long there. It's about to blunder bishop g4, man. So I have two bishops, slightly damaged structure. It's an interesting position, though. Bishop e3. And the plan is rook d1 and e5. It's logical. I'm tickling the a pawn. I want to play f4.
I uh, didn't leave myself enough time there. Also, thank you, St. Louis Chess Club. Appreciate the raid. I assume Sinkfield Cup round finished today. Yeah, Title Tuesday is only the, the second most important tournament happening today. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I took a lot of time in the opening there and paid the consequences. My opponent played a far less common move order. Um, delaying d5. Because usually against d5, I've been liking this line bishop d2. But with rook e8 first, I had to go for something different. I think the position was fine, but I guess it was fine for both of us. So, yeah, if you're just joining, that was round number seven. I'm four and a half out of seven. I did have uh, three games in a row that featured just crazy swindles. I mean, I should have at least like two or three fewer points. So we do have one more game until a break. Um, we can quickly check this game. Main block played pretty solidly positionally. And I was tied down to this pawn, and then the queen side was vulnerable. And I lost e pawn. Yeah, I think my opponent played very cleanly. Yeah, I saw I had bishop e1, but I didn't want to trade queens. But queen takes g5, maybe. It's still unpleasant. All my pawns are weak. Okay. Um, returning to the tournament. Playing Aloha Mora. I'll have another time on. Thank you to Prexa. Knight b3. Okay. Knight b3 is a slower approach. I'll play h5, more aggressive approach. Put the bishop on b7. Yeah, there's times where I like to develop the bishop to c5, but can't do that with a knight on b3. So I think the plan is just to play d6. Having committed to h5, I'm inclined to knock castle, although castling might still be acceptable. And there's also h4 ideas. Starting with d6. Knight a5. I mean, knight c4 is a very typical maneuver. I was briefly looking at e5. I don't think it works for white, though. But maybe it's playable. Trade, trade. Okay. There might be some potential to sack. Like here. Ooh, it's tempting. Take, take, take. I don't think I can resist. It's such a thematic idea for these sort of positions. I win the key center pawn, and these pawns are in shambles. Okay, bishop d4. That's still a fight. Take. I think I have to take. Take. 
And there's idea d5. And then plop the knight on e4. Yeah, that's very logical. Time to castle. Looks shaky. And there's queen c7. I really want to get the knight to e4. Yeah, it might be worse here. If we trade, that might be a draw. They're getting takes, 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 takes. White has perpetual. But yeah, of course, white's playing for a win. So if I take here, take. Rook F1 might be coming. Okay, G3. Thanks for getting merch. If I take on g3 in that line, like maybe I can try playing for a win. Check there. Not repeating. Uh, it's still probably a draw. Do I go completely insane? Okay. <laughs> it's calculating queen f8. Like, check here. I lose a pawn with check. I was thinking maybe, okay, I'm threatening maiden two. The problem is rook f1. I really wanted to try and play for a win, but I think a draw is a fair result. Interesting position. Yeah, maybe there's some alternative. AKD, welcome back. Tier 3 for 51 months. Good to see you. So that was round 8. We do have a break. We can chill a little bit. Looks like there's a few games going. Ooh, are we going to see the two bishop mates? White's not taking the pawn. They want to build up their time. I have a question from Rope and Dope. 
rope dope <laughs> Do you ever play and or like the Vienna game? I don't play Vienna too often, but I respect it. It's an opening that I I'd like to learn more of someday. Is White struggling here? Usually strong players can figure this out. Yeah, now now we see the bishop roll. Don't stalemate. I probably play against the Vienna more than I actually play the Vienna for white. And two Havanese saying, I joined Twitch only to watch your streams. Nice. Do you ever play D4 openings? Honestly, I'm probably due to play D4. There is a long period where I was pretty much exclusively playing London as white in, uh, in Title Tuesdays. Recently, I've kind of switched to an E4 repertoire, but yeah, maybe to finish off this tournament, I can play D4. Assuming I can resist muscle memory, because for the last like, month or so, my, my muscle memory has kind of uh, had E4 built in. Organic. Oh yeah, very organic double bishop mate. Rather than the GMO double bishop mate. Ooh, playing another GM. Here we go. Here we go. Golubev. Getting a good amount of time on us this tournament. We're going to see g4 again. Bishop d3, okay. That's a line that I studied a while ago. There's a d6 here. It's been so long since I've looked at this. D6. I could take, maybe takes make sense. White lost a tempo moving the queen to d2 and then d4. I mean, this is a pretty stable construction. And of course, I want to play b5 and castle. White might go for f4. Queen g5, wow. h6 coming. It's super aggressive. I mean, rook can swing over. Not sure if it does much, though. Should keep in mind a move like g5. Bishop c4. Scheduling, never mind. So B4. Your 
Rook G8. Basically threatening to trap the queen. I was calculating uh, Rook F3, G5, Queen G3, Knight H5. I think also traps the queen. Really? So G5? Not quite seeing White's idea. It could be a blunder. Yeah, I win a rook. Okay, that was pretty clean. An opponent just kind of got into trouble in the middle game. I mean, tried to play hyper aggressively starting with queen g5 and then, then the queen kind of got stuck. I was happy with this move rook g8. And white should really like undo things, like put the rook back. But after rook d d3 and then yeah, G5. Got to use that G5 emote. So six points. Two more rounds to go. Uh, we can watch a game. Uh... Wait, who's leading? Bordnik with 8 out of 8. Okay, we'll watch Bordnik. Playing on Draken. Bordnik has winning chances. Oh yeah, I still need to make that H5 emote as well. Those emotes have not been a priority of recent time. Oh, you minutely, partially regret that I'm not wearing a pineapple, or not a pineapple, a Hawaiian shirt. I don't think I own a Hawaiian shirt. I would maybe wear one if I owned one. Wow, actually, this is really tricky. Shout out to Bortnik, by the way, He's streaming. No more checks. Pawn is falling. But this pawn is pushing. Both players less than like two seconds or less than four seconds. Can black build a fortress? Not so easy. Okay, the pawn is having some path. Wow, is this is this a fortress? Rook is going to move back and forth. I think this is a pretty easy draw. I mean, black can pre-move, like keep pre-moving the rook moves and then just respond to checks. I don't think there's any Zugzwang possibility. I 
Oh, unless you can chase a king to the side. Yeah, actually, maybe it's it's not simple. White's making progress. But maybe there's another fortress, like... That's super tricky here. At some point, there might be 50 move rule. It's actually a really interesting endgame. It's, it's, it's impossible to like scroll back to see. It's every move brings us to the current position. Okay, 50 move rule. Bornig was close. He's still leading the tournament. Oh, Ricaro against Rajabov. Ricaro wins. Okay, looks like another game is starting soon. Here we go. Okay, D4, because I haven't played a London in a while. A few people, I think, were requesting it. Maybe XI Sparks is still here. There is a new viewer here too who was asking about it. We'll play 95. Yeah, so this is a pretty standard line. If knight d7, then knight g5 is very strong. Knight e4 is like the main move. Okay, this is. It was actually a tricky line. I think I'm supposed to drop back the bishop. Queen e2. I might be supposed to take here. I think I'm supposed to take. This is a very positional line. I had a match about a year and a half ago against Tanya Sachdev in the I'm Not a GM uh, tournament. And we went into a bunch of similar types of positions. And the idea is to provoke f5 and then get the knight here, potentially take. I'd also defend the pawn. In g3 looks attractive. I think I'll start by over defending. Black wants to play knight d6 though. g3, queen g4. Um, taking too long.
And still a solid position. Probably rookie one coming soon. Well, if I take there's knight d two in the end. Honestly, I think it's okay. I mean, it's a big transformation. Takes takes knight d two, knight c six. Rook b7, I guess. B7, bishop a6. I'll have knight and two pawns for rook, most likely. So bishop a6. Simplifies further. So if takes I have bishop b7, if takes I'm calculating knight b4. Of course if takes I fork. I mean, <laughs> black has a choice of taking all my pieces. I think this is fine now because I'm going to take on d5 with check. Like, even if the rook defends, I just attack the knight. I think I get away with taking first. Because if takes, takes, the knight's trapped. King here, 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 I have c4. I'll have three pawns for the exchange. And this should be winning. Okay, it took some work, seven points. I don't even want to mention this, but I probably should, is if I win the next game, it'll tie my best score ever for Title Tuesday, which I hit about a month ago. Nice win. Thank you, Richter. Thank you, cool boy. About one more game to go. I still got my 
my London energy. Yeah, my opponent was definitely prepared in the opening. But I still got a solid position. I wasn't sure what to do here. And G3 maybe not the best. Yeah, this line was very hard to evaluate. Engine still says it's equal. So where did my opponent go wrong? Rook D, wait, how does this work? Ah, there's knight takes H2. I miss this. And then black actually wins back all the pawns because takes, takes, and I lose the B2 pawn. It should just be a draw. Wow. So I guess I was a bit fortunate there. Thank you, Elstino. Another new prime sub. Okay, uh, Peravian against Vipranam. This is what we call the Philidor position. Rook takes his, uh, yeah, this is a drawn king pawn ending. Stalemate incoming. Okay. So I'm two points behind the leaders. Oh, playing Jigalko. Okay. Here we go. C3 Sicilian. I played Jigalko recently in like some crazy game. Let's see what he has prepared. He probably remembers last time we played and he's thinking what to do. Knight three is trendy. There's some trap, like if I play b5, knight e4, take, take, bishop b7, queen c2. I have to be careful. If h6 or g6 first. Maybe g6 first. It's not pretty though. It's a move that Black very often ends up playing. Yeah, b5, like it, it runs into these issues with the knight and the h pawn. Now this should be playable. Some risk involved. But now queen c2 doesn't like create the threat against h7. There is that move though. So if I take... I do have knight a5, but... I'd like to start with this. Then queen f3, take, take, take. Complicated. I'm trying to figure out queen f3. 
94. I think it's okay. Queen f3, knight d4, bishop d4, take, 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 take. I win e5 in the end. I might be missing something. Where does that move? So if I take and then queen b6. Oh no, there's takes b7. Knight d4. Take. Knight d4 might be possible. Take. Mm. You have to try it. So if takes, I take on c1 first, and then queen take, queen b6, counterattacking the bishop. There's takes, queen h6, I have f6 there. Difficult calculations this game. Rook takes c8 first, take, take. I have to take with bishop. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I was calculating this as queen h6, f6, which is, I think is only move. Both getting low on time. Take. I want to take on d4, but it's probably not good. Take.
Oh, almost had the stalemate trick. Ah. Good game. Oh, what a game. What a crazy game. 93 moves. Uh, allowed the queen trade. Had to play this move. I was just so much in the habit of moving my kingdom back to the G file. Okay. Some high heart rates this tournament. Some crazy games. This is a fun tournament though. I think a lot of entertaining games. Still trying to cool down there <laughs> to get the heart rate below 100. Yeah, the, the final trick too was playing King H7. Hoping white pre-moves or just doesn't realize that it's stalemate. Uh, but Jigalko is good enough to not be tricked like that. Okay, I I think I broke even in terms of rating. Maybe I gained a little bit of rating this tournament. There was a point I fell below 2600 or 2700 then. Um, got back over. Is it practically viable to do a ridiculous spite check when he has one second left? Mm, practically, it was better to, rather than giving like a spite check that hangs a piece, maybe this check would have been viable. I don't know. It's a risk though, because like if he, if he sees it in time, I'll just take and I'm losing. So I think I'm, I have better chances to keep checking like this. And then there, there was a moment, I was hoping he would play this. I was actually excited to get this position because this I win with queen g1, but that was the wrong square for the king. But I feel like I was in like decent form. I mean, some of, this, some of my games this tournament were like so ridiculous with the swindles. Also, yeah, good job to Hikaru. Tying for first with Jeffrey Jean. Bortnik. Bortnik was leading at some point, but he finished in third. Okay. I'm still trying to like cool down from everything. Can you go through how to use double bishop mates? Probably some other day. I imagine there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Like for double bishop and knight and bishop. I don't think I ever formally learned double bishop mate. So I wouldn't even know the best way to teach it. It's like use your bishops, drive the king to the corner and checkmate is the, the basic strategy. <laughs> um, if I got in the game, maybe I would struggle a little bit, but I think I could figure it out within like 50 moves. What if the opponent pre-moved under promotion? That would be five head. A lot of players have auto queen turned on, so I think that would make it impossible to pre-move under promotion. Is it me or are you way stronger these last six months? Yeah, I've been lifting, bro. I'm concealing my muscles behind the hoodie. I think um, playing playing over the board chess has definitely helped keep things sharp for online chess. I mean, the two are very different, but especially when I played guitar, I like immersed myself with chess for for a while, developed some new opening prep. I did take a break before guitar to play poker and study poker, and maybe that helped like keep some balance too. What kind of tea are you enjoying tonight? Well, I'm drinking, this might be a crime. I'm drinking from a mug that says, Wait, what does it say? There's always there's always time for tea, but inside the mug is coffee. So there's always time for coffee too. Alex Rose. Why is my favorite Scrabble streamer playing chess? Yeah, I took a small break from Scrabble. Gotta keep some balance. I am lifting bro on a t-shirt of your merch, please. I do have some, some related merch. If you scroll down, we do have the, 
the Do You Even Rook Lift Bro tank top. One of my opponents tried to rook lift bro, but then got punished for it against uh, Grandmaster Golubev. Oh, there's white too. Uh, this one kind of blends in, but I have to do some modeling. I think I can update this site where if I do like a, a photo shoot with with wearing different merch items and I can update the photos. Is this chess.com or another website? So this is chess.com. This is my my merch site. Uh, shop.ironrosen.com. What's a rook lift? Oh, that's a good question. So a rook lift is also known as a rover. There are other terms for it too. Maybe some other terms for it. It's basically where you move your rook up and over. So, like in the game I played here, my opponent rook lifted in the middle game. It's a common attacking mechanism. We saw rook d3. The idea was to use a file. So even though this is technically a closed file with two pawns on it, I wants to create the battery. And if I didn't do anything, like if I play b5 and this happens, then white's threatening this and this. I guess I'm still defending with 98, but it would be scary. So in the game, my opponent uh, eventually rook lifted, but then kind of trapped his own queen in. I played this. He tried to double rook lift, bro. But then g5 and the queen was trapped. Do you think what Hikaru said is true, that Tyler 1 will be stuck at 1600? Well, everyone gets stuck at some point. But how do we define stuck? Because you can be stuck for a few days, and then if you play and improve, eventually you can get unstuck. I mean, currently, I mean, I've been stuck at 27.12 for the last few minutes. Someday I'll get unstuck. I mean, I've believed that like your overall chess ability and chess understanding doesn't correlate one-to-one -one with rating, especially if you play as much as Tyler One. And generally, like the higher you climb in rating, it is true the harder it is to get even higher but um yeah i think there's been and there's been a lot of stories of people like getting out of rating plateaus or um just being consistently hardworking and continually improving i guess hannah sace is one example like hannah i'm not sure if she was stuck for any extended period of time but she went from like 1400 to 2000 in the span of a year or maybe maybe it was even less maybe it was like a thousand to 2000 forget the exact uh exact jump in rating i'm looking forward to the day that i play tyler one in my speed run <laughs> just join the ten in the pool and have a fight but yeah with chess like in order to improve you have to put on put in a lot of time Okay, I think the, the general rule to master anything, you need to put in 10,000 hours. And that's not something you can do overnight unless you can somehow like warp time. Is it possible to see like, I think on Lee Chess, there's some stat, right? Like games. If I want to see how many hours I've spent playing games on Lee Chess. Where do I see that? I swear there is a feature. Blitz. Oh, I have to click in into one of these. So let's say like Rapid Chess. Max time spent playing. Oh, this is playing consecutive games. Oh, time spent playing. So I, I've spent 23 days. One hour and six minutes playing playing rapid chess. So that's about, what, 23 times 24? 
So I've spent 552 hours about just playing rapid chess on Lee Chess. Can you see this with any player? German 11. German 11 is like the most notorious Lee Chess account. Has played, man, approaching half million bullet games. So German 11 has spent 455 days, 18 hours and 41 minutes playing bullet on Lee Chess. So 455 days is is over 10,000 hours. But unfortunately, that was not enough to reach master level. I guess like not only do you need to spend 10,000 hours, but you need to spend 10,000 hours effectively and be productive. Like bullet chess, probably not the best way to improve a chess, but um, some people enjoy it. Have fun with it. But yeah, that's a crazy stat. I don't think anyone beats this. Let's see mine. I'm I'm a little bit scared to look. Because <laughs> I've played 18,000 bullet games. If you imagine, usually a bullet game averages one minute. So 10,000 minutes, let's see. Oh, okay, about 23 days. So similar to the amount of time I've, I've spent playing rapid chess. So between bullet and rapid on each chess, I've spent over 10,000 hours. Is this a Lee chess only feature? It might be available on chess.com. Yeah, chess.com had the whole like insights thing, right? Insights. Oh, insights here. Okay. I've definitely played fewer games on chess.com. But I'm not sure if they give this exact stat. Accuracy by game shape. I guess these are the shapes. I'm slightly disappointed though. There's no like triangles or circles or squares. Smooth, balanced, sharp. Yeah, I just want to see how much of my life I've spent playing on chess.com. But maybe that's something that they don't want me to know. <laughs> Time of day. Ooh, maybe we're getting closer. I mean, they show like relationships between the different types of data, which is cool. There's a lot of interesting stats here. Back during the ICC days, just on the, the Internet Chess Club platform, there was a feature where it would tell you that your, um, your percentage of life that you spent on ICC. And some people had like scary numbers. Oh, total on Lee Chess is 102 days, says Ember, Ember, 14 hours and 34 minutes. Is there somewhere to see the collective... Where do you see that collective number? Or do you have to add everything up manually? There's also uh, Chess Insights on Lee Chess. Scroll down from my profile picture. Ah, okay, nice. It was hiding. It was a little sneaky scroll button or scroll bar. I'm part of a lot of teams. So 102 days is, okay, about uh, in 2,448 hours. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap things up. It was a fun stream. A lot of fun games today.
Let's uh let's send some love to an up and coming streamer who recently launched a new book. Shout out to Levy. I haven't uh I haven't read the whole book. But there's one page that mentions me, which is my favorite page. Send some love to Levy. And I'll be back soon. Adios.